Life is fragile. Good health is valuable. Follow your heart. I learned these lessons in 2009 when I was at a crossroads. I was a young attorney. I had prided myself on always doing what I was supposed to do. And I was training for a marathon. I was in the peak of physical fitness while I was training. But instead of running that marathon, I found myself in the ICU. The week leading up to the ICU went something like this. I ran 17 miles on a Monday. It was a little bit slow, but I thought, you know, I was just tired. The next day, I had fevers and chills. I thought I had the flu. I was at work. My solution was to throw on my boss's sweater and work until 8 o'clock that night. I thought that was, was required in order for me to miss a day of work, despite having a huge PTO bank because I never took off. I walked to my car that night. I felt faint and a little shaky. It just reinforced the fact that I had the flu. I was certain of it. I Googled it. I've since learned that if you're a relatively healthy person and you have fevers and chills and you have no other symptoms that indicate that you have a cold, like a runny nose or something like that, it is not the flu and you should go to the doctors. The next day, though, I was too sick to go to the doctors. That was a sign of epic proportions that I did not heed to. Instead, I drank some Gatorade. I thought that my cloudy urine and my aches, they were all a function of being dehydrated from the marathon, and some other runner had told me to prophylactically treat you know, aches and pains with ibuprofen, and so I did it because other runners, of course, are an expert on healthcare. <laughs> and the next day, I felt a little better, so I worked from home. I work in healthcare and happened to have a conference call with a nurse. She told me to go to the doctor. This time, I listened. And so I went to the doctor, I told my story, and he minimized the symptoms. He almost missed the whole thing. Because I'm a relatively healthy woman, I had just run 17 miles, I'm walking and I'm talking, but fortunately, he ordered blood work. I went home and my phone rang in the middle of the night and for some reason I answered the call. I wouldn't normally have done it, it was a private number. But I picked up, and it was the doctor. He sounded a little anxious. He said, you need to go to the hospital now. I said, OK. He said, how do you plan to get there? I could tell in his voice that driving probably wasn't the best idea. So I said, you know, I'll take a cab. He paused. I said, well, I guess I could ask my brother to take me. He said, good, pack a bag. They're probably going to admit you. And when you get there, tell them your white blood count is 27,000. That didn't mean anything to me at the time. But when I got to the emergency department and I told them my white blood cell count was 27,000, they had me go straight back. That's when I got scared. In my day job, I deal with people who are met at the healthcare system, and one of the things they're always mad about is waiting in the emergency department. So the fact that they took me straight back let me know that I was really sick. At that point, my body started communicating more loudly and more clearly, and I vomited and I passed out and I woke up at some point, and people are running all around and they're talking about giving me a spinal tap. But fortunately, I had a talented young doctor who read the test results again, realized that I had a septic kidney infection called pyelonephritis, which meant it was raging through my body, through my blood, and I could have died. She sent me straight to the ICU because I had rapid heart rate, I had low blood pressure, and I needed to get these medicines rather quickly. So in the ICU, you know, I start to hallucinate a bit. Like, it's, it's pretty serious. Fortunately, I had reserves, and so the story has a good outcome. But a discharge, I could barely walk a flight of steps. I went from running 17 miles, and a week later, I could barely walk a flight of steps. I had a second chance. I was at a crossroads, reevaluated some things, and I decided that the man who had been sleeping with me next to me in the hospital was really special. And he was somebody with whom they wouldn't have necessarily put us together on paper, but it turned out that taking that second chance, opening my heart to love, forgetting what everybody else had to say about it was the best thing I ever did in my life. And then I got pregnant. 
Once you get pregnant, when you've almost died, your parents don't really think about what the consequences of that are anymore. And so then I have these beautiful children. I have two. And now I'm a working mom on a quest for balance in stilettos. Thank you.